Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God together in faith from our heart. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over our minds, over our bodies, over our uh, money, over our finances, over our paths, and over everything that we own in the natural and everything that we own by faith in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord over this nation, and Jesus is Lord over our elections, that uh, God raises up the righteous to inherit all of the offices from the least to the greatest in Jesus' name. Today, I hear and receive the word of God. My ears are open. My heart is receptive. I receive the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And that word grows up and produces a harvest now in Jesus' name, because it is a supernatural seed with supernatural growth. The last three days, maybe four, um, the Lord has very emphatically said that we are to focus on His love for each one of us, that He wants you to focus on how much He loves you. This is an individual thing, an individual revelation. I remember when Jesus said to Peter, he said, who do men say that I am? And they said, well, Peter said, well, some say you're this and some say you're that. He says, well, who do you say that I am? And he said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. So it's not important what somebody else is saying about God's love for them. What's important is, is that you know what God's love is for you and how much He loves you. And you know it through the word by his holy spirit so one of the characteristics another one that we're going to look at today is that with god's love there is no fear in first john 4 18 the word says there is no fear in love but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love so i'm going to expound on that he that feareth and we've all been there but we're all delivered from that in jesus name he that fears is not made perfect in how much the father loves him it's not that he's not walking in love. It's that he's not receiving and knowing and receiving the love that the Father has for him. So I was just meditating on this, asking the Lord to just enlarge my thoughts on it. And this is what came to me, is that fear comes in when a person doesn't know what God will do. Faith comes in when you know through his word what he will do. And then you just simply believe that he will do what he said he would do. In Mark chapter 5, Jairus came to Jesus asking him to come and beseeching him greatly to come and lay his hands on his daughter and that she would be healed and she would live. Well, as they were going to the house, some of his servants came running and said, don't trouble the master anymore. Your daughter is dead. At that point, Jesus looked at Jairus and said these words, fear not, only believe. Fear 
not only believe. Well, Jesus says the same thing to us today because he never changes. Fear not, only believe. Fear and faith don't mix. In one place, Jesus said to the disciples, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Well, we have found out that our Father loves us. Through the scriptures, he has shown us very clearly that he has commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us and that God is love. And so, you know, as you meditate on God's love, if you knew that God was going to protect you and keep you from all accidents, because he says in Psalms 91, that because you have made the Lord, which is your refuge, even the most high your habitation, there shall no evil no calamity, no accidents, no injuries, no distress of any kind, excuse me, no tragedy shall befall you and neither shall any plague or any virus or any sickness or any disease come near your dwelling. So God has said that. Now, we believe that that God is true to his word. He is not a man that he should lie. Let me read that scripture to you in Numbers chapter 23, verse 10. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should change. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? In other words, he hath said it, and he will do it. He has spoken, and he will make it good because he's not like a man that should lie. God cannot lie. So when you believe his word, you go to his word, and you believe his word that no evil shall befall you or your spouse or your family. And as you believe that because he loves you, then you won't be fearful. Now, we do acknowledge that, and I even tell my children and grandchildren, you know, make sure that you confess Psalms 91, that you acknowledge that, that you mix faith with it, because the word preached profits us when we mix faith with it. When we had our school, the football team had to say all of Psalms 91 before they ever practiced or played a game. We never had one, not even one injury. And before any of the children went to PE, they were required to learn uh, Psalms 91 and then say it before they went to PE. We never had an injury because Psalms 91, God kept his word. Remember when Jesus was um, after he had preached in Luke chapter 4 and said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind. You know, every bit of that is good news, right? And then um, he made some other statement, and they tried to throw him off a cliff. Well, God protected him because Jesus knew that his father loved him and that he would protect him and keep him from all harm. So he just walked through the midst of them. Well, you are protected and, and your paths are perfect. I say all the time over my family that he leads us in perfect paths because of our enemies. You know, God knows where the bad people are because he knows the heart of all people. So he will see to it that he leads you in perfect paths to where you are never 
around any evil or wicked person and will not allow them to come where you are, whether you're at church or whether you're in a grocery store. He, he will protect you. Say that. Say, my father will protect me and my family at all times. No evil shall ever befall us. So we simply mix faith with that word. Well, God has said that he will abundantly bless your provision, that he will supply all of your needs, your desires and wants according to his riches in glory. He has also said that wealth and riches shall be in your house. He has also said the blessing of the Lord hath made you rich and adds no sorrow with it and many other scriptures on that. So if you believe that, then there is no fear because God will give you the abundant supply of the best of everything, food, clothes, automobiles, houses. That's your father. You don't have to budget it. You just have to believe for it, right? So since you know how much your father loves you and that he has promised you these things, then as you believe that, then you have no fear. You have faith for the things that God has promised you. Or what about this? That he says in Deuteronomy 7, that he will take sickness away from the midst of you and will not allow any of the evil diseases of the world to come upon you. So you mix faith with that, that he has taken sickness away from the midst of me. You believe that if there's been sickness in your body, you go to 1 Peter 2.24. You go to Psalms 103, uh, 1 through 3. You go to Psalms, I believe it's 107.20. That doesn't sound right. Uh, that he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. And, of course, like I gave you Deuteronomy chapter 7, and you just mix faith with those. And in Jeremiah, he says that he will restore health to you and heal you of your wounds. Well, when you believe that, no matter what age you are, this, these promises are for every age. For you to live in divine health all the days of your long life on this earth never be sick, never have a headache, never have any sinus problems, never have any allergies, never have arthritis, never have uh, bad eyesight or bad hearing or anything like that. No, this is all in the redemption. So you just simply go receive it and then stay in faith according to the word that these things will never come on you. So since you know by the word of God what he will do, then there is no fear in love because these are the promises of your father and that he will hasten his word to perform it. You know, the book of Job, the key there is that Job said, the thing that I feared came upon me and that which I was afraid of has come unto me. So the fear that he had drew those things to him, uh, the destruction to him. Satan couldn't have done it had he not feared it. So we are delivered from fear and we have the same spirit of faith. We believe and therefore we speak. Now you may have to voice that a few times if your thought patterns have been otherwise. And the way you do that is you just simply say, no, I don't have a spirit of fear, but I do have the spirit of faith in Jesus' name. I fear not. I believe only. In uh, 1 Timothy, chap excuse me, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So say that right now. God has not given me the spirit of fear, but he has given me the spirit of power, the spirit of love 
and the spirit of a calm, well-balanced, peaceful, sound mind. So knowing the Father's love for you and believing that and believing that he will bring the best to you, that only good things will come to you. I love how Frank would minister this in John 10:10, 10, 10, where the Lord said, um, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Well, draw a line, like Frank would say, down the middle. If it's stealing, killing, and destroying, then if, if those thoughts are coming to you, then you say, no, I don't take those thoughts. But then you replace it with the good thoughts of, no, this is what I have. This is what I believe. And you know, um, social media and the news media, they are, they are going to plant negative, evil thoughts, the worst, but they, those things don't belong to you. You belong to your heavenly Father and you're living in and out of the kingdom of God. So the way God intends for you to live is that sickness and disease never even comes on you. That you are healed and whole for the rest of your long life on this earth. That you have a perfect and just memory, a soundness of mind, the mind of Christ. So a perfect mind, all the days of your long life on this earth. You have perfect hearing. God keeps you and your family safe always. And only good things come to you. Like David said in Psalms 23, he said this, so you say this, surely and only goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And then in Psalms 21, David said, the Lord goes before me with the blessings of goodness. So if only goodness is in your life, then there is nothing to fear. And as you believe that, and that God prospers all of your children and grandchildren and their spouses, and that just everything in your life is blessed of God. You see, Satan was defeated. Jesus totally defeated Satan. And Hebrews 2.14 says that he destroyed him that had the power of death. Satan no longer has the power of death unless you give him authority by, the, by your fear and by the words of your mouth. Well, I shouldn't have said your fear because you're delivered and redeemed from fear. And you are full of the love of God. So meditate on the love of God. In uh, Jude, verse 20, he says, But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's up to you. Keep yourself in the love of God. In other words, you stay in God's love for you. You stay in how much he loves you. And you just constantly meditate on, my father loves me. He is always protecting me. He is always keeping me well. He is always keeping me strong. He is always keeping me from falling. Um... Let me finish this, then I'll share a th quick thought. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So we're to constantly look for his love and his mercy. But when I mentioned that about he will keep you from falling, anytime we would go skiing, I would go to that scripture. I took it literally, and I would just say, now thanks be unto God who's able to keep me from falling. And I had some near misses. But once I started saying that and confessing that, I would just almost sometimes even run into somebody or they would run into me. And I would go, now thanks be unto God who's able to keep me from falling. And all of a sudden, I'd straighten up and go on down the hill. So the power of the word 
And he even says in Psalms 91 that he will bear you up lest you even dash your foot against a stone. Hey, that's any age. We don't lose our equilibrium. We don't lose our balance. We don't lose um, anything. We And listen, we're redeemed from being smitten in the knees and the legs, in the hips with the sore botch from the top of our head to the sole of our feet. So God keeps our bones and our knees and our hips and our hands, everything strong all the days of our life. If you will believe that, that is the love of the Father. So again today, all day, just thank God that he loves you, that he is protecting you, that he is making only good things come to you, that the devil has run from you in stark terror. You know, I hear... Uh, from time to time, people say things about, or preachers say things about, when the devil comes against you. He cannot come against you if you're resisting him. No, the word says, resist the devil, and he will run from you in stark terror. So we just stand in faith against him that he can't even come near you. Amen? He cannot. If you will stand against him, he cannot touch anything that you own. He does not have any authority unless you um, listen to his lies that he can. No, he cannot. You are in the realm of faith. You are under the shadow of the Most High God. Well, meditate on those things today and, and acknowledge with your mouth. Declare God's love over you and your family. Declare it. And let me tell you, that love will drive any fear out. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for his word and thank God for his love. He loves you.